Hello and welcome. My name is Angie Holden and I'm the blogger behind the Country Chic Cottage. Today we're going to talk about a new laser and this one is the Flux Bemo. Now this is a CO2 laser that really probably isn't any bigger than a microwave. I mean look at how small this laser is. I wanted to be sure to get myself as well as the laser in the video frame here because I wanted you to appreciate just how small this laser is. So if you have wanted to get into laser crafting, however you wanted to do things like clear acrylic, a CO2 laser and this video is for you because this is a budget friendly option as well. So I can't wait to show it to you. So this is a 30 watt CO2 laser. That means you can cut and engrave things like wood, clear acrylic. I'm gonna engrave slate, leather, some coated metal all in this video. So tons of materials that you can both cut and engrave in this machine. And because it is a CO2 laser, it doesn't have a lot of the restrictions that a lot of the dial lasers that I review does. So who is this laser for? It's for makers, small business owners, beginners to laser. Those of you that wanna try a CO2 laser but don't wanna make a huge investment, it is for all of those people and so much more. Now, because it is so small, there are going to be some size restrictions, right? So let's talk about the maximum sizes with the Flex Bemo. The working is 30 by 21 centimeters or 11.8 by 8.2 inches. Now, I was able to squeeze in 12 by 12 sheets of material and cut those. However, you can't cut the whole 12 by 12 inch size. The max cutting depth is going to vary by material, but it's about 5 millimeters. And then there is a honeycomb tray installed. If you were to remove that honeycomb tray, the maximum thickness of something you could say engrave would be 45 millimeters. Now there are some accessories we are going to talk about in a minute, and some of those involve taking the bottom of the laser off and raising it up. So we do want to note that. So this video is going to cover the laser itself. The only accessory that I'm going to add during this video is the autofocus module. You might like an autofocus rather than a manual. Both of them are just as easy. So I'm gonna show you both options within this video. And seriously, the manual focus is so easy. You might not want to opt for the autofocus. Other accessories that you can purchase include a rotary module to engrave on tumblers. You can purchase an optional air filter accessory so you don't have to vent out a window. If you want to use light burn with this machine, you will need to purchase a light burn cable. I did mention that this is a CO2 laser. However, there is a dialed laser option for this machine and you could purchase it to add on. Along with the laser, you will get a vent pipe, power cord, a few other cords as well as a Wi-Fi adapter. There will be some lubricating oil as well as a funnel. Then you'll get a clamp for the hose itself, some double-sided tape, few different manuals, including a warranty, quick start guide, as well as your user manual. Then it does come with a gift card for $150 worth of files on their site, as well as a few different tools and a couple pieces of wood to get you started for your first projects. Now, some of this will be packaged inside of your laser and there will also be a honeycomb tray inside the laser itself. For setup on this laser, you are going to add the power cable as well as the Wi-Fi antenna. Then you wanna remove the foam piece from inside of the ventilation tube and attach the ventilation tube with the included hose clamp. You can then go ahead and plug up the laser, turn it on, and start following the on-screen instructions. So the laser itself has a touch screen and you'll use it to select your language, read about the safety, which we will cover in a minute, and then run a startup test. You don't wanna skip the startup test if you're using the machine for the first time. You'll follow the step-by-step -step instructions on the screen for that startup test. This helps you check the laser and make sure it's operational. There are instructions within the manual that comes with the laser if you have trouble running the startup test. During the optical test, you will be prompted to take the double stick tape that comes with the machine and stick it to the bottom of the laser. Now you will do this twice and each time there should be a burn mark in the center of the tape. So you'll do this once and then it'll prompt you to repeat it a second time. If you have issues during this test, refer to your user manual. You also use the screen to go ahead and connect your machine to Wi-Fi. And you do wanna check your coolant level. So it's all the way in the back of the laser. You're gonna see a small box with a label on it. You're gonna want that to be about 80% full. So that is approximately to the top of the label that is on that box. Before you get started with this process, you will want to unplug the laser. Be sure it is off. Mine is a little low, so we're gonna go ahead and look at refilling that. So you wanna remove the screws from the back cover. There are two on the top as well as four in the back. Then you can go ahead and remove the cover. 
And then under this is where that tank is located. So if you could just kind of move it out of the way, there's a plug on top of the tank. And I'm just going to remove that with a flat head screwdriver. Then go ahead and remove that plug from your machine and add the funnel to the hole. You wanna make sure that the funnel is down inside of the hole and secure. Then you're gonna add distilled water to this to fill it up to the top of that label. I put my distilled water in a measuring cup so I have more control in order not to spill it. You do wanna go slowly here, fill it slowly, and keep checking the level and don't overfill. Once you have it to the line, go ahead and remove the funnel. Add the plug back into place with a flat screwdriver. Then you can just put everything back inside and replace the cover along with the screws. So now let's pause and talk about laser safety. As always, you will want to vent this laser. I'm going to vent it out the window beside me. However, you can use an optional air filter accessory. The top of this laser is actually clear, so you will want to wear some sort of eye protection like laser safety glasses if you are going to look directly at the laser while it operates. You also want to stay close by anytime the laser is operating and keep a fire extinguisher and or fire blanket on hand at all times. And then as always, you want to be careful with the materials that you cut with the laser because some materials can be hazardous when cut with a laser. So be sure to check the materials that you're gonna cut and make sure that they are laser compatible. We're gonna download BMO Studio and start to use this laser. Now I do wanna note that BMO Studio does have a learning curve. I have another flex laser, so I have used BMO Studio before. So just wanna note that as a beginner, if you purchase this laser, this is your first flex laser, that the BMO Studio software might have a learning curve for you. At this point, you can go ahead and get on your computer and download the latest version of Beam Studio, which you will use to operate your laser. Within the software, you want to connect the laser to your computer. One of the things I really love about Flex Lasers is the touch screen control panel. So you can do a wide variety of things on this panel. For now, let's head to Beam Studio and design our first project. As I mentioned, the working area for this machine is not very large, but I am gonna use this plywood sheet in here for the first project. I'm gonna go ahead and use Beam Studio to make a design. For the design, I used the text tool and I added a couple of lines of text and then I added a rectangle around that. Now, I did go back and put the rectangle on a different layer and that is important because you need cut layers as well as engraved layers within BMO Studio. Then I resized everything to fit, made sure everything was centered up and now we can go ahead and click the camera button Go ahead and go back and move this to the top sort of left-hand corner. Click the camera button again. I'm trying to stay out of that blind area, so I'm going to go ahead and add a photo here of this area, just to make sure that I'm going to be on the wood itself. What the machine is going to do is move the laser and take individual shots of my material. So this gets a very accurate picture of whatever is in the bed of your laser. Now I know that my design sits completely on my wood piece. I'm gonna go ahead and go back. Now for this, I'm going to just engrave the outside, but if you wanted the whole thing engraved, you would do the fill option. So I could do the fill option on both of these if I wanted the inside engraved as well as the outside. If you don't have the autofocus attachment, you will need to manually focus this laser. So you're gonna flip the clear piece down and then just adjust the laser. Once this is loose, move this entire thing down until the clear piece touches your material. Then tighten that back up and flip the acrylic piece back up. Now your laser is focused on the material. So that's the manual way to focus. I'm going to click the play button here. This is gonna take about eight minutes and 11 seconds to cut and engrave on this laser. And we can go ahead and press start to start the process. Now you do wanna be sure to vent out a window and wear laser eye protection if you are going to watch the laser operate. I did also want to note the touch screen here and how much you can see while the laser is operating. This is one of my favorite features of this laser. Once that's complete, we can just lift that up and take a look at the project itself. I ended up making two versions of the wood sign. So this version I did a fill engrave, this version I did not. 
Now on this version, I did not have the focus set correctly. And you can see there's way more burn marks around the outside of the engraving. Whereas this version, I had everything set correctly and it looks way better. So if you are struggling, be sure to get the focus correct. Then also this one was much larger because you can do fairly large projects with this machine as well. Now, if you've purchased the autofocus accessory, you will need to install it. First of all, there is a zip tie up here and you'll need to cut it. Then we'll go ahead and loosen this ring. Then I went ahead and removed the honeycomb tray. I'm gonna pull this laser head out. Go ahead and remove that laser head, set it to the side. There are four screws back here in the back. We're gonna go ahead and loosen those. Once those are loose, you can remove this entire module. So you're gonna need to unplug both the camera cable as well as the LED wire from this board. You'll then remove the reflection mirror with the three screws. It's the three silver screws. And then we can start on the new autofocus module. And the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is to take this panel off. Inside of here, you'll find your slots to plug in your camera and your LED. Then you're gonna put the entire thing back on the track and tighten using the four screws with the Allen key. Then you can reinstall the third reflection mirror on the top with the three screws. Then reinstall the laser head by pushing the laser head all the way to the top of the module, then tightening the screw on the left to lock it into place. Now you will need to check to see if the optical path is aligned. I did find a good video for how to do this and I will link to it in the description below this video. Once you have aligned the optical path, you can reinstall panel on the autofocus module using the two screws. I'm gonna go ahead and add a piece of material into the laser. There are two ways to use this autofocus module. The first would be to move it over the material. Then there is a probe on this side and you can double tap it. This will autofocus the laser. You can also go to document settings on the right hand side and turn on autofocus. I'm going to add a piece of clear acrylic to the machine and go ahead and autofocus. For this one, I am going to upload a design. I did upload the SVG file. In order to get the file in there correctly, I did have to choose the color option. First layer, I'm gonna choose acrylic engraving. This layer, I am going to choose acrylic cutting. I did go ahead and preview that section just to make sure I had it on the piece of acrylic. Go ahead and close the lid and send this to cut. I will note that I had to remove the protective film from the front of the acrylic to get this process to work. Once I removed that from the machine, I cleaned it up a little bit and you can see the engraving looks great. Now, I still have the protective film on the back. We can just peel that off. And now you have a super cute engraved acrylic bookmark. So yes, this machine will both cut and engrave on clear acrylic. Then I continued to put this machine to the test with a few more projects. So I did a wood keychain, I did a metal dog tag, a slight coaster, as well as a leather patch. And I engraved on all of these just to see what the Flex BMO could do. So this is the first project I did, second project, third project, fourth project. You can probably tell that I got better locating the design each time. So I found that the camera was slightly off on my machine and the smaller the item was, the more I could tell that it was off. Now I could kind of manually adjust it within the machine and I did a pretty good job of that with this small dog tag. So I engraved this wood keychain. This dog tag is a coated metal and I was able to engrave it. I engraved a slate coaster as well as a leather patch. So while locating the design was a bit of a learning curve, I feel like I got it pretty good, especially by the third and fourth project I did. Now I've made several projects with the Flux BMO Let's talk pros and cons of this laser. Those of you that have been wanting to try a CO2 laser, this is an affordable option, which is number one pro. Number two is it is such a small footprint. Other CO2 lasers are very large and often aren't great for those of us that have small spaces or small craft rooms. The Flex BMO is great for that. So if you've wanted to try a CO2 laser, wanted to cut clear acrylic, but don't want to spend thousands and thousands of dollars on a laser, the Flux BMO might just be the laser for you. At 30 watts, it's a powerful laser. 
I really had great luck with both the manual and the autofocus option, so you don't even necessarily have to add the autofocus add-on. You might save your money and just manually focus the laser. It can cut and engrave a wide variety of materials, and then you can add on those accessories and do things like tumblers and different things like that if you wanted to get even more complicated with this laser. Then a couple of additional pros. I absolutely love the touchscreen on this laser and being able to see everything on the screen. I love that it comes with a honeycomb tray. I am a huge honeycomb tray fan. I absolutely love a laser with a honeycomb tray, way better than other options like triangular prisms or things like that. Honeycomb tray is definitely for me. The cons, I am gonna list the size restrictions just in case you wanted to do super large projects. I am also going to mention here that the software does have a learning curve, so just be prepared to spend quite a bit of time, especially in the beginning, learning the software itself. You also saw me within this video fill the cooling tank. So removing the spec cover, filling that cooling tank. I must say that that process itself was a bit difficult. However, hopefully you won't have to do that very often, but I did want to know that that's probably going to be a process for you. And then the hose that attaches to the back for ventilation is just not very sturdy. So you might be prepared to need another hose very quickly after you get this laser. All right, so overall, the Flex BMO worked great. I think it's a great laser, and I mean, this is one you all have been asking for. So I hope that this helped you find that laser that cuts and engraves clear acrylic in a smaller, more affordable package. So now, if you are ready to purchase the Flex BMO, I will have links in the description below this video for you to purchase the laser itself, as well as all of the accessories. Drop down to the comment section and ask me any questions that you have about this laser, or something I didn't cover, or something you want to see in a future video, drop those in the comment section. And then if this video helped you, give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, head on over to my YouTube channel, hit that subscribe button. Thank you all so much for joining me, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.